Here's another question um, from the Ask Caramoon Facebook page. So Alex Brook asked, what are some proven techniques um, for learning language, um, particularly learning vocabulary, um, quickly and effectively? And uh, it ways to retain vocabulary. So I'm not sure about proof because um, it just doesn't seem to have been any real <laughs> research into language learning. Presumably, um, governments have done a lot of research into language learning because, of course, they need to train staff who are going to work abroad in embassies and, and, and military as well. Um, but I've never seen any of that published, really. <clears throat> um, they sometimes publish their guidelines for language learning, so maybe we can look at that and assume that they've reached those conclusions from research. Um, but based on many, many years of um, studying and accelerated learning techniques and also teaching language, here are some ideas. Um, so the first thing is to have some kind of system. Um, what I found from studying memory techniques is that having a system, even if it's not a very good system, um, will give you good results because a system especially sort of going through some steps, forces you to be far more aware um, of the content you're trying to remember. So kind of the, the truth about memory is that human memory is essentially perfect in that we can remember anything um, we were aware of, but by remember, I mean we can kind of retain it. And that's not necessarily the same as recalling it. Um, so you have three jobs to do. You have to be aware of something. You have to retain it in your brain. And you have to be able to recall it later. But um, all the credible research into memory techniques says that the middle thing, the retaining, is not really something you have to deal with. Your, your brain is just perfect at it. Um, there have been studies where people have been shown 10,000 photos and then years later have been shown photos, some of which were in the 10,000 and some of which weren't. And so they'll ask, you know, have you seen this photo before? People have come up with inc incredible rates of accuracy. Um, it's important to understand that current memory um, research seems to suggest that all memory is visual. So you'll hear people saying, oh, I don't have a visual memory. Um, or what about blind people? But it does seem that even in those cases, people who are adamant that they don't have a, a visual memory or people who are blind, um, memory still massively involves the, the visual cortex in your brain. Um, so someone may say, oh, I, I remember feelings and textures or something, not visual imagery. Well, that's kind of a language issue in, in, in the... Um, yes, maybe they, they remember a texture, but it's still being um, regenerated on in the visual cortex. So just having some steps that you go through every time when you're trying to um, acquire vocabulary, um, that seems to work very well for the people that I've taught over many years. Having steps that involve kind of learning multiple words. So instead of learning one word at once, one word at a time, how can you turn that into an opportunity to learn several words? So if you're learning a word, you may um, want to, let's let's take a word, um, imagine you're a non-native speaker of English and you come across the word telepathy. Well, tele, um, the prefix tele means distance, kind of far away. So you could connect it to lots of other words that begin with telly. So you could use, just use a dictionary for that and come up with a cluster of words beginning with telly. So telepathy, telekinesis, um, television, telescope, kind of thing, teleprinter, telex. You get a whole cluster of words beginning with the same prefix. Um, and that means that 
what you're doing is is what in memory training and memory science is called chunking. So you're making a, a chunk. Um, your brain is happy to remember chunks, and a brain doesn't particularly care if a chunk has one item in or several. So it actually makes sense to try and learn several words at once. It seems that memory really works by making connections between things. So looking for opportunities to connect things together um, helps a lot. You can obviously connect a, a, a word to um, the equivalent word in your own language. There are issues with that. Um, one issue is sometimes that seems to inhibit recall because presumably because when you're in a situation say you're learning French and when you're on holiday in France everything's in French around you and someone's speaking French to you in a shop and your brain is kind of struggling to, to match up the French to the English words so you're not it, so it doesn't really help you when ideally you'd like to be thinking in French um, and another very obvious problem is that there are so many cases where there's not a direct one-to-one -one mapping um, of the words. So you have this this word in your own language, this word in the other language, but they don't connect together very well. Um, so it might lead you to, to uh, use words when it's not appropriate. And generally with memory, we think of um, I guess the, the, the foundations of memory um, using association. So you could associate the word to a word in your own language, or you could, um, I think a better way is to associate it to the image of that thing. If it's, if it's an object, even an abstract noun, you could get something to represent it. Um, if it's a complex thing, make a little story. Um, or, and or associate it to related words. So if, if you're uh, learning a language that um, where words are built in um, a quite consistent way. So in English, of course, there are lots of words from Greek, lots of words from Latin. So English is very rich in prefixes that go at the beginning of words and suffixes that go at the end. Um, you could use that. Another way is when you get a word, um, let's say the word was expensive. You could think, well, expensive is an adjective, so it's a describing word. Um, what are some of the nouns and verbs and adverbs so connected with that? Um, what are some of the phrases that go with that? Um, what are some words with similar meaning, what are words with opposite meaning? So expensive, you might say, um, the opposite is cheap. Another way of saying expensive is to say something's not cheap. I think that's called the litotes, litotes. <laughs> so kind of the opposite of a word plus negative if it's an adjective. Um, you've got nouns like expense, so you can think of like ex business expense. Um, you've got kind of words with um, relating you know, like spend, expense, spend, expensive spend. So you can make, make a whole class of words opposites like inexpensive. Um, interesting adjectives like, um, well, think of the verb expend to kind of use something up and then adjective expended something that's been used up um, maybe you feel lots of your friends are expendable um, so you could you could do without them so that's a way to, to make some associations um, one thing that is a genuine kind of proven aspect of memory is is the next key ingredient which is location so you've got association then location. So trying to keep your memories in a physical place um, is massively useful. That could be um, a physical external location as in like writing stuff down, um, in which case you want to do that in a structured way. So looking into mind mapping is, is a good example of that. Um, but also it can be a physical location that's kept in your brain. So um, things like using um, a journey, especially if you have a sequence, if you have words which um, have a natural order like months of the year or something, 
might have a little sequence of 12 um, stages. This could be just the, the route from your house to the local supermarket or train station or whatever. It could be a, a journey around your house. And you can put an image representing each word um, in each stage at uh, each stage of the journey. And that brings us on to the, the third key aspect of memory, which is imagination. Imagination, so association, location, and imagination. And with imagination, it seems to be that using um, as many aspects of your imagination as possible is, is the key thing. So regardless of whether you think you're a kinesthetic learner or an oral learner, any visual learner, whatever, any, any of that kind of stuff, um, in my experience with teaching a lot of people these techniques, I found that the ones who do well kind of forget anything like that and just use as much imagery and as rich imagery as humanly possible. So... Um, the German word for plate is teller, and you might imagine a bank, big fat bank teller, um, in a restaurant, and um, maybe um, say it's a guy, so he's got a huge plate of spaghetti, and he's um, he's eating this big pile of spaghetti, and the spaghetti's going everywhere, and you can smell the spaghetti, you can hear him slurping the spaghetti, you can obviously see it as it's a visual thing. Um, maybe you can feel some of the, the grease um, splashing onto you. It's using as many skills as possible. Um, related to that um, is using logic. So even having very kind of um, rich fantasy images, but still putting some kind of logic there. Now it can be nonsense logic, so um, maybe the plate could be a giant gold coin um, to remind you that he's a bank teller um, or maybe the plate um, that the teller is eating off is also telling him things that maybe reminds you of the word teller so the plate's got a giant mouth on um, maybe the the bank teller is trying to eat the spaghetti faster than the plate is eating the spaghetti with a giant mouth so making a really rich crazy image um, now what I found with these Images is that lots of people claim they don't work and then when you get them using the method They'll find that just the act of trying to create the image helps them remember Because that's of course um, making them more and more aware of this fact that the You know the word for plate is teller for example in German um, So association location imagination now, the way I remember those three things, A-L-I, Ali, think of Muhammad Ali, um, the world's greatest boxer, but let's, you know, let's imagine he's the world's greatest memory champion. So you see Muhammad Ali, A-L-I, association, location, imagination. And that's an, that's an example of coding. So having codes is very, very important. Um, you might want some kind of little visual code that reminds you what type of word something is. So you come up with your own coding system to encode words that are, if it's an, describing an adjective, you might have a little code for that. Um, so you might, let's say, um, in your images, you might have a sports commentator describing what's going on. And that reminds you that this word is an adjective. If you were um, writing this kind of vocabulary in, in maybe some kind of mind map or concept diagram, that kind of thing, and you might have a, a certain code based on color. So blue for all the describing words, the adjectives, um, red for all the verbs, so the action words, something like that. So kind of encoding is very important. Now, an example of, let's say, German. So German is a language where um, the words have gender, so in, in German there's three genders, masculine, feminine, neuter. So you might want some kind of coding system for that. Um, so one approach is to um, kind of 
divide the um, vocabulary into into groups and then physically in your brain have um, a section for all the words that are masculine, all the words that are feminine, all the words that are neuter. So if you're organizing the, the words into locations around a, a city, the real city where you've lived or um, a city you've made up or a city in a computer game or whatever, you can have various sections of the city. So one maybe divide the city up with um, say a river and a big road so you know that um, on one side of the river all the words are feminine um, between the river and the road they're all masculine and the other side of the road they're all neuter um, or if it was French where it's just masculine and, and uh, feminine um, we can just have a big river down your uh, virtual city um, and then the last aspect of, me of memory that's really important is review um, so psychologists kind of talk about memory as um, short term and long term um, so short term so you retain things for a few seconds uh, there's a very famous essay 7 plus or minus 2 so you can sort of most people can hold 7 things well let's say between kind of 5 and 9 things um, Anyone who's done any memory training uh, knows this is just not not true at all. Um, we definitely have um, a wide range of memories, um, and even something like your long-term memory, um, with with very distant memories. For example, um, the perspective of the memory changes. So usually, when we remember something, we remember it through our eyes. Um, one of the reasons why humans are so stupid is that after a longer period of time we remember things um, kind of in third person as if we're like watching a film of something. Um, the reason that makes us stupid is because it puts um, too much value and weight on things that we remember in the past because um, we're feeling that we're kind of watching it as um, an impartial observer, which obviously not because we were there. Um, so it's a, a really bad aspect of memory um, and we know just just from the patterns of review that work um, certainly there's, there's memory is far more complex than people having a very short term memory and then a long term memory so one of the purposes of review is to kind of move the things through the memory um, now this might sound like it's in conflict with this concept that memory is essentially perfect um, but again this is kind of a an issue with how with how I use language because I think what's happening is when you're doing the re review is really you're aiding the recall it's not that you're kind of embedding the, the memories deeper in your brain um, it's that um, you're making it easier to recall them so a very very simple review system um, would be review something just a few minutes after you first studied it and maybe an hour later and then the next day and then a week later and a month later and generally it's found that these five reviews mean that you can still recall it forever without too much difficulty um, now, review should really be an active thing, not just, um, let's say, looking at your notes again. An active thing so that you um, try to recall the word. And um, if you're having difficulty with it, then try not to recall the word, but try to go through your memory process again. Um, so you might have, um, let's say you've used the, the location system and all your words to do with food and eating and that kind of thing um, are held in a restaurant that you've constructed in your brain and you start thinking, okay, I'm standing in the restaurant, I'm looking around and where are the plates in the, in the kitchen? No. Okay, well, there's, oh, there's a, a big plate 
at one of the tables and there's a man eating off it and you start going through the process and you notice that the man is dressed as a bank teller. Now it's, it's taken a few seconds for me just to explain that but in your brain these things are sub-second okay they happen in, in at just tiny split seconds um, so yeah the um, the process sounds clumsy when you try to explain it um, but it's not it's it's happen happens in split seconds so when you're trying to recall things just going through a bit of the process that you remember um, so um, the tenth president of America I'm trying to remember that well I can Seeing the number ten, it's on a door. Oh, it's it's ten Downing Street, and that reminds me. Um, it's not John Major, who was a British Prime Minister. It's John Tyler. Okay, so John Tyler, tenth president of the, of the United States. Just remember it with that little tiny little um, image, um, and, and you know the. Um, your ideas can be sort of um, as crazy as you like. So um, the a fun a fun thing to kind of try to memorize is uh, U.S. state capitals and um, the state Louisiana. I can see um, two women. They're running a relay in a relay race. Louise and Anna, and they're passing. A, red baton that reminds me that the capital is baton rouge um kind of silly stuff um but um yeah your brain loves it it's a fun it's um it's quite um change it changes memory and study from like a, a tiresome tiring thing into something that's quite refreshing when you go through the memory work you sort of feel kind of afterwards I guess you feel, feel kind of alertly relaxed like you've been meditating or something like that so I hope that's been useful um, yeah please keep the questions coming um, so it's just facebook.com slash moon you can post questions there uh, you can post questions in Facebook um, comments you can post them on YouTube comments uh, just contact me directly if you like whatever um, and my cancer fundraising page is at matthewdons.org m-a-t-t-h-e-w-d-o-n-s dot org thanks a lot